Hey, what's up, everybody? Kirby, Alex, welcome to the Passive Money Plan. The only reason why I laugh when I do that every time because I always forget what's the direction of point. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about everyday conversations. Just everyday conversations. Uh, a lot of people that uh, that I'm around, I know Alex around, they know what we do, and I'm not talking about YouTube. I mean, they know that, well, you know, we very focused on finance and building wealth and creating wealth and things like that. So we today we wanted to share with you everyday conversations that we have with people. Maybe a conversation that we've had with somebody might help you out. You know, maybe a question that you have that you might want to answer. But no matter here or there, just trying to give you an idea of what is it like in a day of the life of people coming up to ask questions and how we handle the situation. With that being said, Alex, you can start it off. Yeah. Um, so I can say, like, let's say uh, I saw my cousin yesterday. A cousin, you haven't met him. It's on uh, my other side of the family. But um, he had a... He, he asked me what I'm doing. I told him just working, investing in uh, stocks, got a rental property. And um, we talked a little bit on stocks and he was saying, you know, I wouldn't know what I'm doing. I can't do that. You know, and then like a little bit into the conversation, he was like, you know, the only thing I would invest in is penny stocks. And I was like, well, I was like, you wouldn't really invest in penny stocks. I was like, there's people that trade them. And then he proceeded to like go on a tangent of like how like trying to back up why you could invest in penny stocks. So I'm like, you ask me what I do and I'm trying to tell you and now you're acting like all of a sudden now you know how to invest in something that you don't know what you're talking about. And I get that. I get that kind of reaction a lot from people where some where people will ask me something and my response to them is like gives them an idea as to like now they know what they're talking about and they'll they'll try to have some kind of defense statement and like oh well i think it's this way because but they have no idea about the topic they're just trying to talk or have a conversation have a point or a stance on it but they don't know what they're talking about yeah and i mean i've i've had that uh before not i mean before earlier in my days like a lot of people had the penny stock conversation and the thing is is the reason why well, did did you ever get an answer to him? Why is it good to invest in penny stocks? No, no, no. Someone had cut us off, and the conversation kind of ended there. But okay, and and this is and this is what they're thinking. Well, from you know my understanding of what people think about penny stocks, what they think is okay. It's so cheap. It's so cheap that it has to go up. That's what it is. It's like it's so. I can buy a lot of shares, but they never question is why is it so cheap. But that's them not having understanding of how the market works. It's the reason why the price is that cheap. Now, maybe you can get one, let's say one out of, you know, a 20,000 shot that you got into the right stock. It was a penny stock. It got FDA approval and it grew, 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 grew. It was a, you know, riot back when it was 53 cents. It was a, a plug back when it was like 36 cents and it did like, maybe you get lucky and hit one of those. But that's not investing. That's playing the lottery. But that's what they see. They they think that they don't understand. Stocks can go to zero or go bankrupt. They don't understand that. They just say, oh, it's so low. I can buy so many shares and it's so low. It has to go up. That's why people think of penny stocks. And then you get the Tim Sykes of the world that's out there convincing people that you could be a trillionaire off a of penny stock. Can, can you, if you did the homework and want to put in the time, effort, and did it over a long period of time and understood the market, could that happen? Yeah, maybe. I don't know because I haven't done it. I haven't done it. But maybe, but it's not like it's going to be in masses that people can become wealthy trading. 92? Is it 92% of day traders go bankrupt? I think it was 96. 96% of day traders go bankrupt. So that goes into to that theory. So could somebody do it? Yeah. Could it be another 10 sites out there? Maybe. But it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a plan that's going to guarantee that you get to that level. Uh, I'll talk about a conversation I had last night. And this is one that uh, I mostly have. I mean, I didn't say I mostly have. Well, people ask me the question and they all reverts back to the same thing. So it's just like, oh, first, the question is always, how did you get into investing? Yada, yada, yada. So I tell, you know, my story about being a, as Andrew Tater called it, a brokey. <laughs> being a brokey. 
And then we talk about it. And then they always say what you, what you learned or what it is or what, you know, what's it about? And then when I tell people, it's not about how much money you make. You see the face trend and twitch. It's about what you do with the money. And then it's because they're not expecting that. They're expecting that you're about to give them the hottest, you know, the hottest stock, hottest investment, the hottest secret in the world. It's simply, it's not about how much you make. It's about what you do with the money. I was like, if you spend way less than you make, you have something to create wealth with. I was like, if you, let's say you live your life like it is now. Let's say you make $20 an hour, you spend $20 an hour, great, fine. So now you got to find a way to go from $20 an hour to $25 an hour to $30 an hour. But you still got to live on like you was making $20 an hour. And then they act like I stole their joy. So you're saying I can't make the money and just blow it. No. <laughs> the secret is how much money you keep. And, and then, you know, so it's going about it. And then, of course, and, and it's funny for me when you get, you know, spouses or, uh, you know, spouses or, you know, uh, family members or something like that. And they're talking to me. They always blame on each other. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. It's just he can't stop spending or she can't stop spending. It's just a, I'm like, they just throw each other under the bus. And that just, it's, it's crazy. But but that's the thing. It's, that is the whole secret is. Spend less than you make and do something with the difference between what you live on. And what, but people don't get it. They just think that, oh, I make it. I should be able to spend it no matter what it is. And I, and I told I told a, a gentleman yesterday, I said, that's the thing that's holding you back. I mean, because he said something crazy like, oh, work hard, play hard. I said, yeah. And then we, you know, and then always, and then always, the other concept I always bring up is, you should never work for what you want. And what I mean by that is you should never. So let's say, let's say, Alex, I know you're too cheap, but let's say you wanted a car, <laughs> right? Your job, you should never want to work your job, make whatever you make on an hourly rate and get a paycheck and go buy a car. What you should do is you should work a job and let's say you want a car that costs, let's say, $500 a month. You should work to find an investment that will pay you $500 a month. No matter if it's rental property, whatever, that you should work and invest to give you, what whatever investment you make, you need to make a cash flow of $500 a month. And then you spend your money and you save your money to work towards that investment. The reason why is because if you work and pay that $500 a month, you have to keep going back to work to pay that $500 a month over and over and over again. But if you bought that investment or put all your money into that investment, it will pay the $500 a month. If you're working or not, it will still pay that $500 a month for that vehicle you want. But the key is once that vehicle paid off, it's still going to keep paying you the $500 a month over and over and over again after the vehicle's paid off. And that's work that you don't have to do. And people just... They get lost in that concept. And it's, you don't work for what you want. You work for what you want to invest in that's going to pay you what you want. And after you get what you want, it will keep giving you money to buy what you want over and over and over again. But you don't have to work. With the job, you work for the car. If you lose your job, next thing you know, you might lose a car. Next thing you know, you might lose the house. You might lose everything else, the furniture that you got on payments and all that. But if you have an investment that's paying for them, you can still work, have that money to start creating another investment while then the first investment you have paying off your own. And then you keep working to create another investment, to create another stream of income to make it happen. But when you tell people you shouldn't work for what you want, that's one that people just like, oh, this guy tripping, this guy tripping. No, you know, I also, that. but I love that method too, because uh, I mean, for one, you see everybody that's wealthy doing just that. But if you really think about it, doing that saves your most valuable, your most valuable investment, which is your time. If you're working, trading your time 
for money and you use that money to buy an investment that pays for your expenses that you have to work to pay, but you get to a point where your investments are now paying those expenses. Now your time is free. And now you can choose to do whatever you want with your time. If you want to keep going to work, if you want to leave your job, but you have those investments that are paying for your life. And that's why I mentioned in like a, a previous video that we did that um, people have to look at all the perspectives to finance and uh, business and everything, because so many people just have a narrow vision of you work to, or you invest to make a whole bunch of money and blow it. Like you said, or it's all about making a whole bunch of money and just spending it. But no one takes the time to literally just like look at life itself, realize we're going to die one day and figure out how to maximize your potential on earth for the time that you have. Mm -hmm. And in doing that and investing for your life, you can now uh, do whatever you want. I heard, was it, this was actually Andrew Tate. He said, uh, money doesn't buy happiness. It buys freedom and freedom buys happiness. And it's simple. Yeah, I'm free as a bird. <laughs> free as a bird. Yeah. yeah, and that's and 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 that's true. It's it's like like I said, it's it's a lot that that people just don't realize. I, and uh Dan Pena said it best. I think I think it was Dan Pena. If I'm quoting the wrong person, uh don't sue me, bro. <laughs> uh, uh but he said Broke people are the ones that are selfish. And, and when I first heard it, I, I paused for a second. But then when he explained it, I had to agree 100%. I think it was Grant Cardone. I know he's said that. See, see that's why I said don't sue me before I said Grant Cardone. There we go. I knew it was somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it made sense. It made sense. People that sitting here, they work, 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 and then they spend everything on themselves. Got it. But then you get mad at the people that work, 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 and they don't spend everything on themselves. They live less than they could live if they spent all the money that they made on themselves. And then, excuse me, then they take that money and then they invest it to make more money and they still live on less than that to go do other things. Like, like people, you like it or not, the people that make the money and are wealthy, they do create jobs. They do create living conditions. They do all those things. I mean, just because they're making a lot of money off of doing it, but they are creating jobs. The person who works the person who works and then they spend all their whole paycheck on themselves and they're not trying to do it. They're the selfish one because it's all about them. I want to cut you off so bad because I love this topic because I tell people this so like so often, like people don't realize they, they just like assume we're born into this world. We just spawn into a, this world that already has jobs, already has housing already like and I talk to I, I mentioned this to people that always say oh why do these multi-billionaires need hundreds of billions why can't they just have one billion dollars that's enough and my point is like do you not realize the society we have the technology we have how modern the world is now like it took money to create all of this and it took individuals like them to create corporations create companies to lead the world into these new developments these new industries to have all of this, to create jobs, to create. It came from people that are rich and they invested their time and effort into creating this for the world. And people that just want to spend all the money on themselves, buy a big house, buy a car, want to hate on those people when they're literally moving the world into the future. Like that I just blows my mind. Yeah, the Apple phone that you use every day wouldn't have been created without somebody who lived on less than they made and they invested the extra into the technology that you enjoy today. I mean, the hotels, the Airbnbs that you go to, everything is somebody had to live on less than they made to create those experiences. 
just think of it. They had to live on less than they made for every experience that you have, every restaurant you go to, every house you live in, every restaurant, theme park, whoever it is, they had to live on less than they made to take the excess capital to create every endeavor out there. And then I know there's going to be some smart Alex out there. Like, oh, well, they got loans, but there's no zero down loans. They had to come up with the funding. Yeah, they went to investors. Well, whoever could come up with the money to invest, that means they gave up to live less than they made to create the environment you live in now. That's all it is. If you want to get on the economic ladder, the first step is live on less than you make. If you wanted to buy a house, you have to live on less than you make to save up the money to have a down payment, even if it's FHA, 3 to 5%. Live on less than you make. It ain't, oh, I hope I can get a tax return and then bam. I mean, some people do that, but then most people is underwater and then they lose the house anyway. If you want a rental property, you got to live on less than you make to come up with a down payment for a rental property. That's how it works. Everything that's created, that advanced technology, that advanced the uh, you know societal norm, somebody had to live on less than they make to create it. So if you want to get on the economic ladder, the first step, and I'm saying it again, is live on less human. Alice, that's all I have. <laughs> well, guys, with all that being said, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Um, don't forget to don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.